Imagine your whole life was a lie. Your history, your friends, family, your past was all just fabricated by this Illuminati-like organization that built you a synthetic human and placed you amongst society. How would you feel when you found out? Could you handle it? That's one of the hardest things about being a synth is upon the realization that if you ever do find out that much of your life could be a lie. The very fabric that your personality, morals and actions are based upon nothing tangible, just augmented or completely fabricated memories. In the Fallout universe, particularly in Old Boston and the larger Commonwealth, the Institute manipulate, survey and scheme with the implementation of synth spies. But in the case of Paladin Dance, we can see that synths have spread even further than just the Commonwealth, reaching places like the Capital Wasteland. Sometimes the synths made are completely new people. Sometimes people are killed and replaced with the Institute's synthetic version. It's a scary world to be in. Is your best friend really your best friend or just a synthetic replacement that could be ordered to turn against you and murder you at any moment? But say you are a synth in the wastelands of the Commonwealth or even beyond, there exist some very useful advantages. You don't need food, water or sleep. You're immune to disease, you're biologically immortal, you won't age, but you can't lose or gain weight. But the caveat is that you are still programmed with feelings of hunger, sleep and tiredness. Would you want to be a synth? What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and today we have another cool hypothetical discussion for the fantastic Fallout universe. Is being a synth worth it? If you had the choice to be you, or the synth version of you, which one would you pick? Considering all the pros and cons of each and understanding that the wasteland is a harsh and unforgiving place where it could be beneficial to have a superior body, this is the dilemma that I propose to you today. Is being a synth worthwhile and would you become one? So let's get right into it by laying out all the benefits and negatives of being a synth over a human and then I can try and determine what my decision would be and then you guys can share what your decision would be in the comments below. This should be an interesting one so let's jump right into it. We all understand what it's like to be human, the pros, the cons, so we don't really need to go into that, but as for a synth, you have some very, very useful survival abilities. Now before we go any further, I do just want to clarify that we are talking about Generation 3 synths, the synths that are indistinguishable from humans. They are of synthetic organic matter. We aren't talking Gen 1 or Gen 2 synths because who would want to be what is essentially a robot? Most people would just go, yeah, of course I'd be human. But the trick with the Gen 3 synth is that their experience is basically indistinguishable from a human's experience, except for the fact that they were created, not born, and they have some cool abilities. But then again, most are not aware that they are synths. So now that is clarified, Generation 3 synths, what do they bring to the table? Well, if you look at a human's experience in the wasteland comparatively, they undergo many more hardships. A human needs food, a synth does not. A human needs water a synth does not. A human needs sleep, a synth does not. But the trick here is the fact that many synths are unaware of the fact that they are synths and they truly think that they need food, water and sleep. The only real way of finding out that they don't need them is by essentially not eating, drinking or sleeping for days on end and realizing there are no significant repercussions. Actually, now that I come to think of it, that's a very easy synth test. Not exactly a nice test, but you could grab the suspected person, lock them in a room for seven days without water or food, and observe them. If they are perfectly fine and their body weight doesn't change, no muscle or body fat loss, then you know they are most likely a synth, because remember, synths can't lose or gain weight. Whereas, if on the third day you have noticed they are getting weak, sick, and unwell, then they are human. Bugger the mental testing and all the contrived tests, just do that. But anyways, tangent aside, obviously for straight up survival, synths have the upper hand. If you are in a situation where you can't eat or drink for 21 days, the human will be dead and the synth will be completely fine, which is a powerful survival advantage. Now there is also the fact that they don't seem to age as evidenced by what is said about the young Sean synth who will forever remain a child. Synths that are old or adult were created as such and memories of their life have been implanted and fabricated. So you have theoretically a limitless life as well, not aging at all, and on top of that, you have an immunity to disease and there's even bits of evidence that point to improved radiation resistance or even perhaps immunity, but that's not confirmed. But overall, as a synth, you are one hardy bastard. While humans have to worry about food, water, sleep, aging and disease, 
you don't have to worry at all, except for the fact that you are probably programmed to worry about them as a normal human would. So if we simply looked at physical elements of the synth versus a human, of course I would rather be a synth. They win out from a very logical, survival-oriented standpoint. But that isn't the only factor. If it was, this wouldn't even be a discussion. So we've established that being a synth is definitely preferable in the physical sense because of all the immunities and lack of needs that this form brings. But what about from a psychological standpoint? As a synth, you have been created as you are. Your memory is fabricated. You are not technically the person you believe you are. Now, you could possibly go throughout your whole life never knowing, especially if you were killed by a raider or something before you became old, which is likely. But I feel that most synths would eventually find out or become suspicious when they don't age or if they eat 30,000 calories of myeloak meat and don't add a single pound of fat. Simply put, for the sake of argument, if you don't know you are a synth, nothing is really gonna change, you think you're human. So for the hypothetical, let's go with the idea that you know you are a synth, you have come to the realization through some means, whether it be the railroad or testing or a glitch in your programming, whatever, you have found out that you are a synth. Could you handle it? You would have to come to terms with the fact that most of your life is a lie. Your old friends probably don't exist. Your childhood memories are false. Your lifelong dreams may have been month-long dreams. You have no idea when the memories blur from falsehood to reality. It would be a hell of a shock. So if I had the choice to be human in the wasteland or a synth who has just found out that they are a synth, what would I choose? It's still a very hard question to answer, though I feel like you could be very optimistic about it, or you could go completely nihilistic, nothing matters, my life is a lie mode, but just based on the kind of person that I am, usually a glass half full kind of guy, I think I'd be able to process it and go, well, that's fucked, but who cares, because what I do know, the present, is real, and what I can do in the future is also real. Life moves forwards, and who cares if my past is false? They program those memories, but they can't program the present or the future. But now I know I've got these cool physical abilities too, it would be pretty sweet. I think I may even go with being a wasteland synth sage who can just fast endlessly on a mountain experiencing peace and helping others and exploring the meaning of life. I may have a lot of time being ageless and all, so perhaps I would be a synth. Perhaps it would be worthwhile. With an optimistic disposition and all neat physical abilities, I think I personally would do fairly well as a synth and enjoy my life. Answer the question for yourself right now. What do you think you would choose? Because in a second, I'm about to throw a curveball that would scare me away from the choice of a synth. Under the assumption that the Institute is still alive and well, this is where I would freak the fuck out. The threat of the Institute courses, hunting me down for reprogramming, having a code that can be uttered that will shut down my consciousness is a super scary thought. As a synth, at the end of the day, you are still vulnerable to your programming. The Institute could recapture you and remove all your memories, decimating your sense of self, and just repurpose you like any other machine for some other infiltration job. It's a scary possibility, and with synthetic crows, teleportation, vast surveillance networks, courses, and other synth spies, the existence of the Institute could drive you severely paranoid, making that mountain monk retreat far more appealing. If this were the case, I would run as far away as I could. Perhaps New Vegas, that would be a fun time. Somewhere on the west coast. If the institute was destroyed and I was a synth, I would definitely pick synth. As an optimistic person, the only downside is the institute and how damn scary would that be for you? I guess though there is also the potential fear and ridicule from other humans, but I think that can be easily hidden since you basically look exactly like a human, plus there wouldn't be the synth hysteria in the west coast far away from the commonwealth. So at the end of the day, what would I pick? If I were in the Fallout universe, I think I would rather be a synth, knowing full well my memories and childhood were fabricated, but they feel real to me, and if they help me make up the person I am now, assuming I like the person I am, then who cares? The Institute may have control of your past, but not your present or your future. I'd get into some deep philosophy, go on some pilgrimage, the hell out of Boston as far away as possible from the Institute's influence, and if the Institute is destroyed, then who cares, they aren't a threat. Of course, if they are there, there will always be that risk that the Institute can come and reclaim you, eradicate your memories, your person, and use you however they please. But consider, if that is the only threat, you may be in a pretty sweet position, because no food, no water, no sleep, no disease, 
that is a lot of daily survival stresses that you don't have in comparison to a human. And imagine all the help you could give, helping the hungry, the thirsty, watching and protecting the sleeping, working in plague infected areas. A synth is the perfect person to help humanity. So overall, I think I would pick a synth. Yes, I think being a synth is worth it in the Fallout universe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Personally, I love these kinds of video discussions, the hypotheticals, the lore, I just love it. Do give the video a like if you love it too, and feel free to suggest some cool discussions and worth it ideas in the comments below, or you can head over to our Twitter accounts via the links in the description to send your ideas. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, thanks so much for watching, subscribe to see more of this, and I will be back again to nerd out with you again next time.